When it comes to F1 engines, we think of Honda, Mercedes, Ferrari, and Cosworth. These names are heralded as the leaders in Formula 1 powertrain technology and are the pinnacle in motorsport engineering and design. But once upon a time, there was another contender. May not have been a competitive one, but a contender nonetheless. Yes, it's your favorite boxer engine manufacturer. Subaru. Huh? The late 1980s and early 1990s were some of the glory years for the Japanese economy. Profits skyrocketed as Japanese electronic goods took over department stores worldwide. The economy was booming and Japanese motorsport also reaped the benefits of the money pouring in. In 1989, Yamaha and Honda just joined Formula 1 as power unit suppliers. And Subaru didn't want to be left behind. They wanted to be with the cool kids and show that they got the skills to be an F1. So on that note, today we are talking about Subaru's crazy flat 12 engine and their history, albeit a very short one, in F1. Anyways, before we get into it, I'm Sep, a car enthusiast making videos for other enthusiasts like yourselves. So feel free to subscribe to get your weekly dose of YouTube car content. Subaru had entered motorsport most notably in the WRC, with Turbo Legacies and Imprezas ripping down the stages. With a leap of faith, Subaru decided to try their chances during the 1990 Formula 1 season. Subaru didn't build their F1 team from the ground up. In 1990, they bought Coloni Motorsport, an Italian racing team founded by former racing driver Enzo Coloni. The team was decently established but failed to achieve any success in Formula 1. So Subaru's 51% acquisition of the team was potentially their chance to turn their track record around. Part of this deal was for Subaru to provide a flat 12 engine for the team. And one company that had the expertise with flat 12s was Motori Moderni, run by Carlo Chidi, a former lead engineer of Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. One of the reasons a flat 12 was thought to be a good idea was because of the turbocharger ban during the 1989 season, which remained in effect until 1994. So car manufacturers were designing high horsepower naturally aspirated engines, and the flat 12 was supposed to be one of them. However, this wasn't the first time a flat 12 engine took to the Formula 1 stage. In 1964, the Ferrari 512 F1 car was powered by a flat 12 engine and raced alongside the V8 Ferrari 158 upon which it was based. More notably, in 1975, the Ferrari 312T was introduced, with a 3 liter flat 12 engine pushing a little over 500 horsepower. This car went on to win 4 constructors and 3 drivers championships between 1975 and 1979 with legendary drivers such as Niki Lauda behind the wheel. A successful flat 12 for Ferrari showed signs of promise for Subaru's more modern version called the 1235. This engine was transplanted in the Coloni C3B F1 car, an extensively modified version of their previous F1 car to accommodate the flat 12 engine. The overall design was far from perfect and its assembly was so rushed, the team was only able to complete a short shakedown in a parking lot before its debut at the 1990 United States Grand Prix in Phoenix, where it unfortunately finished dead last in pre-qualifying because it failed to finish a single lap before a gear linkage failure. The next 8 Grand Prix for Subaru all ended up with the same result, in last place and unable to get through qualifying. The car was not aerodynamic, the engine was underpowered, and the handling was unpredictable. All of this pushed Subaru to end their F1 hopes and dreams by selling the team back to Enzo Coloni with no sponsors or power unit. But Subaru's 1235 engine didn't end in F1. It was also used by the Alba racing team for the World Sports Car Championship in 1990, where it was transplanted in a Group C spec car called the AR20. But just like F1, the engine proved to be extremely unsuccessful, only qualifying for one race. Although the 1235 was designed for Formula 1, it didn't stop the largely unknown Japanese racing car constructor, Dome, to try it in a road-going car. The result of this gallant attempt was the Giota Caspita, a prototype billed as the F1 on the road. The Mark 1 variant used a detuned version of the 1235, rated at around 450 horsepower. The chassis had a bonded aluminum and carbon fiber monocoque designed by Mitsubishi. It had gullwing doors and a bare bones cockpit, with no air conditioning, cruise control, and cup holders. 
Unfortunately, this car never made it into production, and the Mark II variant of it swapped the 1235 for a more robust V10 engine pushing nearly 600 horsepower. Now, the last known use for the 1235 was actually for a hypercar legend, Christian von Koenigsegg. He almost used the 1235 in his first production supercar. The story behind it goes like this. He met Carlo Chidi through a mutual friend and got Motori Moderni to put together a modified 1235 with an increased displacement from 3.5 liter to 3.8. This pushed the engine closer to the 600 horsepower mark. Then when Motori Moderni filed for bankruptcy, Koenigsegg won some of the company's assets including the tools, drawings, castings, and spare parts for the 1235. Christian actually found the flat 12 engine quite amazing. It sat under the center of the rear axle, which gave it an extremely low center of gravity. It produced very low vibration, so it was able to be bolted directly to the monocoque. Also as a cool fact, since the Koenigsegg monocoque was originally designed to fit the flat 12, the engine mount positions for that engine are still used in the Ajera today. The only downside is that it was only able to produce around 750 horsepower with a turbo. And that was very short of what Christian aimed for. So the idea was scrapped and so was the 1235's legacy. Anyways friends, that's it for this video. What do you think about Subaru's flat 12 engine? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Take care.